welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Claiborne. So a couple of days ago here in the Midwest, um, I was standing on my porch looking at my temperature gauge and it registered 120 in the sun. So we're under some kind of a heat dome and I don't think we're going to get a weather break for a few more days. So it's about six days in a row of being over 100 degrees, but <laughs> chores still have to be done. I could go six days without doing any laundry or I could come out here as early in the morning as possible and get the laundry done. So the way I do laundry is a little bit unconventional. And most people on, uh, like for instance, on my Facebook, and I say that I use a wash tub and a washboard, they're like, ew, no way would I do that. Well, no, you probably wouldn't, um, person. <laughs> I do. I don't have much choice. Um, if I want laundry done, I can go to the local laundromat and I can carry all that up there and I can give them money, which it's a local business. I don't mind that. But when I lift the lids um, of the washing machine, five or six roaches came running out. No, that's when I say, ew, I'm not doing that. So I don't want to bring home any kind of critters, uh, roaches or water bugs or bed bugs or who knows what I'm going to come carrying home. So no, so I'm not going to go, I'm not going to pay somebody that's not even going to spray their building. And, and let's say they do spray their building. Then I get to walk in, I get to inhale all of that bug spray. Oh, lucky me, be still my heart. So no, so I prefer if I don't have running water and I don't have septic down here, that's fine. I will find a way to do my laundry. And so this is the way I've streamlined for me to do my laundry. I hope you enjoy this. So the first thing is, is y'all know, now I have my wonderful water catchment in place. So I actually have a lot of water down in there. And it's clear, I can see, you guys can't tell because the screen on top, but it's clear. I can see it's almost full, um, but I can still see the bottom. So it's nice, clear, cool rainwater. And then right here on the back of my cabin is where I hang um, my wash tub. So it's a number three wash tub and uh, it's just galvanized tub. Then I use a couple of jugs and I'm going to fill those jugs with rainwater. Bring that, the wash tub and the washboard over to my station. All right, so what I do is I set up my um, tub and then I put my old lady in it. I'm very gentle with her because she actually is vintage. Um, I just prefer this metal one because it gets my clothes so clean. I don't like the feeling of my knuckles on glass. For some reason that creeps me out. Like I'm not somebody who could hold frosted glass in my hand. So I, my, my sense of touch, I just prefer the, uh, the metal. And so I have a metal one. I went out specifically and found her. Then I use my water. Each of these jugs holds about two and a half gallons. So that's going to be two and a half gallons to wash and two and a half gallons to rinse. Um, I always set up with two. Let me get out of the. Um, I always set up with two baskets. I set up with my dirty laundry basket. And then I set up with my wet basket. So when things are wet, they're going to go in there. And I always use something absorbent so that I don't get mold and mildew in that wet basket. And then uh, I keep, just keep my supplies under here. Now you'll see Tide, but um, that's, I don't have Tide in that. Um, that's just soap, uh, some soapy water. But I use, you know, just soap, soap clothespins and that is bleach and sometimes when I do whites I will add one or two drops of chlorine bleach and then I'm going to put my first two and a half gallons in here and get my first load wet so the only thing really I'm missing that I'm not providing for myself is the soap at this point like I could do without the bleach if I had to but I am missing soap um and that's why I want to grow uh, soapwort. And I'll put up a link to soapwort if you've never heard of it. And it does grow here about a mile from me where there's a huge colony of soapwort. However, um, I was waiting for it to die back so I could go down and seed collect. And of course, the county cut it down, not just once, but twice. So I'm gonna have to order seeds. Also, I want to put up a link to a short story. I don't know who the short story is by, but it's called The Washerwoman. And it's the story of love loss and the art of laundry i absolutely love that story and i think if you read it and let it resonate with you you're going to feel different about your laundry about the chore of laundry and it's going to become the art of laundry 
to you after that. So I'll be sure and put up a link. And if you have a chance, please read that short story. All right, let's do some laundry, shall we? Okay, so what I wanna show you here is, for those of you who have never used a washboard before, how to actually use it. So what you do is you just, you get your material wet and then you put it out across your board and you take your soap and you add some soap. It don't have to be a whole lot of soap because it's not really about the soap as much as it is as it is about your tool. This is your tool. And so like any other tool, you don't want your hands and your soap to do all the work. You want your tool to do the work. And so you just see all these tea stains on here. So you just keep going up and down across this abrasive surface and you'll see the soap suds come out kind of brown looking. You just keep doing that until the soap suds look white. And then when you notice that the soap coming out of it is no longer this dark brown, you'll start seeing it more white. Then you know you've gotten all the dirt out. Plus you can just visually inspect and you can just see that you've gotten all the dirt out. So again, I just wanna stress, you don't do all the work. You make sure that your tool here is actually doing the work that it was intended to do. All right, so it's all been washed. The water's been dumped. Then it's been rinsed. That water's been dumped. The only thing I'm not happy about is the fact that I'm still using soap, uh, store-bought soap. I really, really wish I could do all of this with my plant soap. And I hope to, by next year, have those uh, plants growing in my garden, and then I don't have to feel bad at all. I also wish I had a spigot on the tub so that all I have to do is turn the spigot and then drain the water um, into my uh, herb garden, which hopefully that's gonna be set up within the next year. So, um, yep, I am hanging my laundry now. I am made very happy by this. I'm not saying everybody would be made happy by this. Some people, I suppose, are happy with their you know, big washing machines. They, they get the newest and the best and the, and the stainless steel and all of that and they walk past it and they feel very happy looking at that machine. I personally never found the happiness from a machine. I find the happiness in doing this myself and providing myself with this. Everybody's gotta find their own sources of happiness. I wouldn't take this away from anybody. People across the street from me, their house has gone up for sale. It's a five suite house, not five bedroom, five suites, $620,000. I hope whoever lands there is made happy by that house. Me, I'm over here across the street with hillbilly bathtubs and wash tubs <laughs> and washboards and hanging laundry, but this makes me happy. This is where I find my happiness. So in the last 30 minutes, basically I went to the gym. I um, went to the sauna because it's very steamy out here today. Um, and I did the line, I went to the laundromat, all in 30 minutes and I never left my house. And I made very, very happy by that. I really do encourage you to read the uh, short story, The Art of Laundry. Um, not everybody, like I said, is gonna be made happy by doing something this way. Some of you may have regulations against it where you live and you can't do your laundry this way. Hello, butterfly. But I don't, I don't have any regulations and I can do this and I have found a great sense of joy and happiness from providing all of this for myself. And over the last three years, I've learned to streamline it. So it's nothing for me to come out now and do my laundry. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got some inspiration from this. Find that which makes you happy. If you're not happy using a machine, then find another way to do it. But whatever you do, Find those sources of happiness for yourself. And don't worry about what makes other people happy. Worry about what gives you a deep sense of satisfaction and happiness for yourself. Much, much love and light. Blessed be.